Hey guys, so welcome to UK Property News. So today's first story, basically, you know, it's interesting because we're seeing lots and lots of negative media and every week I'm, you know, bringing you negative. I'd love to say I bring you know, huge amounts of positive. The thing is, is that I look at this and, you know, I mean, well, actually, let me explain. So Mark Carney, the Bank of England um, the director, basically he's come out to say that if there's a no deal in Brexit, that house prices could drop a third and interest rates could go up by 4%. You know, and, and basically the whole world turned to crap. Well, not the whole world, but Britain. Um, you know, and look, he has that interest because basically his role is to predict these sort of things and to come out with, you know, what he thinks will happen. And the thing is, when you look at the data, you know, it's, it's kind of, that's the worst case scenario, okay? So if that's the case, as property investors, we should maybe look, what happens if it goes down a third, yeah? What happens if interest rates go? And really, going down a third, you know, I don't agree with it, and I'll explain why in a sec. But I think, you know, house price dropping isn't necessarily the bad thing. Interest rates rising 4%, yeah, that could be very damaging. But here's why I don't think this will happen. And here's why I think even if there is a no deal Brexit, I don't see that interest rates are going to rise that much, you know, uh, and, and, you know, and it all turned to crap. And the reason is this, is because if you look at everything that's been happening, we normally have this cycle where basically house prices shoot up, they sit stagnant and they shoot up again. And, and actually they sort of go like this, you know, and up and down. But the reality is that if you look at what's happened over the last few years, okay, excluding London, house prices actually haven't run away and, and grown that much in the last 10 years. They haven't, they just haven't gone up that much. You know, London is the exception, but look what's happening in London now. London prices are dropping. You know, and if you have a look at this graph here, you know, as much as everyone's saying how bad things are and house prices are dropping and sediments dropping and all these sort of things, the reality is that London, yes, things are decreasing, but everywhere else, things are increasing. Now, not galloping away, okay? But you know what? If they were galloping away, I'd be concerned. You know, we actually don't want a market that gallops away because that scares everyone and therefore we want to put the clamps on it. Now, we've already been putting the clamps on it tax changes, stamp duty changes, you know, um, all these sort of changes, the mortgage affordability and mortgage you know, criteria. It's an amazing thing how they've just put more and more clamps on the market. Now what that has meant is that rather than prices going up like this, what they've actually done is they've caught it gone like this. And the thing is, if they go like this, they tend to go like that. If they go like this, they tend not to go too much down. So this whole third, I just don't get it. And you know, and I think to be fair, he's gonna be proven wrong. He's leaving next year. I mean, just last month he was talking about, you know, the fact that, you know, he's upbeat about the market. And you know what? The statistics are pretty cool right now. Um, you know, looking a bit deeper into it, you know, come to the next story. Um, look, July wasn't a good month, but the reality is we had, you know, the weather, great weather, and we had the World Cup, which was everyone was distracted, the whole country got in on it, on the act, you know, because they did so well. So the reality is, you know, that affects sediment, that affects demand, that affects house prices in that month, okay? So this is not surprising, and guess what? August is gonna do the same thing, because there's been good weather, and that's traditionally the holiday month. I mean, I think I've got seven people off today, you know, in my business, um, you know, and it's like seven people. Normally we have about two or three off each day. We've got seven, so that's four times as much or as many people as we normally have. You know, that affects business, that slows things down. People are overseas, you know, and that's the other thing. Lots of people are going overseas this year, which is great. Sure, the staycations, but you know, yeah. So the next next um, one I want to talk about is, are international buyers coming back? I mean, lots of stats have been coming out about how UK buyers are making up the majority of the market, which is actually what the government politically is trying to say they want to happen. But are they actually doing it? I mean, Sadiq Khan come out and said, when he first got into, this is the mayor of London, um, come in and said, I'm gonna do a review of all foreign ownership in London. And I don't think I've heard anything about it. Uh, maybe he's still doing it, I, I don't know. Um, but I dare say that they realize that that is part of the thing now, London being an international market, Manchester being an international market, Birmingham, and that's the first time I've said this, okay. Um, I think those three places above all else are gonna perform best. And you know, yes, if you can't afford London, get into Manchester, get into Birmingham, because actually they are world cities now. Manchester in particular, because you've got you know so many flights from international destinations, direct flights into those areas. 
you know. Um, and, and if you know if you're in the streets of Manchester, you'll start seeing lots more internationally faced people. I don't know whether that's that's not a racist comment, but no, the reality is you won't see English, and we're already seeing that in Australia in a massive way. When I go at home versus 20 years ago, it's changed. Yeah, these are international cities now, and international cities attract international investors, international buyers, and aren't necessarily you know as affected by the local market that you're in or the country that you're in because you've got that. You know, we're seeing a lot more. I mean, we're we're actually getting a lot more international interest in property right now, which is fantastic. So another another story, house build bosses cashing in or selling up their shares. You know, and when you first look at it, you think, oh, well, they must know something. They're getting out of the market before it all turns to crap. Well, probably, maybe, who knows? But actually, I think what it comes down to, and I know this from actual, not actual experience, I won't say that, I'm not getting these bonuses. You know, um, Tony Pidgeley, Barclay Homes, great, you know, developer. They actually set, and I think this was in 2012, they set up a five-year thing, so that's 2017, um, where basically bonuses, you know, uh, the top-level bonuses, and they, I think it was about 300 million they stand to gain. Well, they started cashing that in. You know what? Good on them. They actually have performed very well, and, and a lot of this stuff that you're seeing now is because the performance is back in 2012, 13, 14, 15, not necessarily right now performance, okay? To be fair, these guys and the house builders took heed of the problems they had before and they put more of a long-term view on you know high-level executive bonuses and good on them you know and, and you know what if they earned that fantastic I mean it's pretty cool like you know we're talking 67 million um, Tony Pidgeley take it over the last year we're talking 75 million Red Row you know so these are big figures but these are some of the top companies in the UK you know and how does that compare to other industries? Well, you know, fairly well. The house building industry has been doing well. You might find that it doesn't do as well over the next five years as we sort of slow down and the London market slows down and comes back out. So let's talk about um, Brexit. I've got two more stories, actually. Brexit. So Brexit's first one. You know, this story really is about, you know, we need a vision. We need something. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Mark Carney's coming out and saying no deals, potential third drop in house prices, you know. There's so much negativity, and what it's pointing to is, you know, these politicians have to get their act together. The problem I see is that there's no leadership, and the leader, Theresa May, leader, I don't even know if a core or leader, you know, the figurehead, Theresa May, who's totally inept, I think, personally opinion, but yeah, um, just isn't getting it. There's no vision. I mean, her Brexit means Brexit, her, you know, soft Brexit, hard Brexit, she's just all over the place, and I think she hasn't got her party back here. You know, she's got half of it going this way, half of it going that way. You know, and my love, my final story that I'll finish on is the stories are now starting to come out that Doris Johnson potentially could be PM. And I hate to say this, but I think there's something in that. I think Theresa May has to go. And I think these style of, you know, people saying Boris for PM, you know, um, Jacob rees um, Hogg um, for PM, you know, these sort of things are starting to come out because you've got an inept leader. So what's happening now? People are starting to rally their support and I think very soon, okay, if we don't get a thing with Brexit in April, I think Theresa May will be out. Personally, I think she should go out now, you know, and just jump before she's thrown. Okay, guys, so that's it for this week. So remember, subscribe and comment. You know, I answer all the, the questions you've got. I'll record videos if you, you know, want them, if they're appropriate for the, the response. Um, you know, back into doing lots and lots of content. You know, I'm really motivated. Um, things are really happening, and it's great. So feel free to subscribe, comment, and I'll get back to you. Alright guys, have a great day.